canal do Instituto Vida para Todos. Oi, Oi André. Anderson, tudo bem? Oi, André. Boa noite. Tudo bem? Hi, tá how are you? Things good. Can you hear me well? Meu áudio tá bem? My audio, my audio as well? O vídeo tá bom também? Você me chama? I'm gonna call Douglas. Yeah, is my video okay? Yeah, it's perfect, perfect. Agora já chamamos o meu Pedro. So, let's call her brother Pedro. Just give me a minute. So the invitation was accepted, and now we're going to call our song. And Douglas is here as well. I'm going to once again accept your invitation so that you can come in with us. And then we'll prepare Brother Beto to come in with us. I'm going to send the invitation to him. Can you see if you're able to join us now? I'm going to send it to you. Ah, boa. Okay, good, good. Eric is well? Testing, testing, testing. Okay, now I'm going to put Brother Pedro. And Pedro, we're um, accepting your invitation. And we're all here Amen. in the live. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Brother Pedro. Amen. Yes. Yes. Andre, I don't know if your internet is good because it's a little bit shivering. Is that, <clears throat> everybody see me? Yeah, there's a little bit of a. The connection is not so good. Okay, fantastic. Uh, okay, so at least the cell phone, I can see the four of you here together. Yes. So, dear saints, we're here beginning one more live broadcast with the help of Brother Andrea Oliveira, this time with the participation of Douglas and Emerson Cabral, both from Sao Paulo. If Amir was here live, he would say to Douglas, Douglas, tell, speak to us, Silvio Santos, or Douglas, right? Yeah, there's a, nothing escaped him. Douglas actually already participated once in the live broadcast. Emerson is the first time, right? So just so the saints know, Douglas is helping us as one of the mighty men of David in Sao Paulo. I don't care for Sao Paulo, but the whole region here. And Emerson, know him from long before he was a young man, really young. Praise the Lord. He always had lots of burden for the young men. He wasn't caring for them and shepherding them, the younger than him. And then I recruited him and I said, Emerson, it's so good. You're doing this work with a group of young ones in your family friends, but now you'll be more useful in the church to let us insert you in all the context of the church life. So praise the Lord, Emerson is adding up to this uh, army of God, this wonderful army of God. So I'd like you to introduce yourselves and also to share a little bit about this weekend in Sao Paulo and also those who are in Bauru, we can also speak a little bit about What's happening here in the state of São Paulo now? I pass to you. Amen. Amen. Do you want to speak, Emerson? First, where Pedro knows me. He celebrated my, my, he went to my wedding. I had the privilege that my wedding, he came to my wedding and he also always took care of us when we were teenagers. And we also replicated that care with the other young ones. But, but in 2020, as he said, you, I was too not so active. But now it's been a blessing, not only to me, but also for my family. So I want to thank the, thank the brother for this invitation. So you can tell us about Sunday, how it went. 
uh, on Sunday, this weekend, it was wonderful. We, we went as Region 1. We had a little bit of a taste. We always wanted that time, intimate time with Brother Pedro. We saw other regions on Sunday and the brothers on fire and jumping and saying, when is, our, when is it going to be our turn? And then Francisco and Rodrigo were able to separated that date for us, and it was wonderful. Just as, as a testimony, Brother Pedro, one of the brothers, one of the young people who are who is my nephew, he went to the fellowship on Saturday and on Fridays and Saturday, and he commented, oh, uncle, I am living my best spiritual life. I was also very laid back, but there's no time for anything else. I only want uh, I only have time to serve him. And so that word has come to stir, stir us up. It's not because you want position or a recognition or reward, but we do it because of love. Our, fundament, our, our base is love. Yes, of course. There's no other way. Everything is for love. That word is so fresh for us, and it has circulated. It was 120 brothers and sisters who went, and it allowed the word to circulate in a new way. In this new way, to practice the refined immersion, also to, to go deeper into the word. And so we're very happy with this new, with this new tool that was turbocharged for us to go in, in depth into the work. A lot of brothers in Sao Paulo, and why we leave Sao Paulo to go to Estancia? But it was really good. First, because the church really needs to consume us that we need to have this care for it. This, what the brother read, and I think it, 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 it stirred up everyone. That the church life I'm sorry, the, the, the lights went out, the energy went out, so I'm sorry. And that, okay, okay. So introducing these two things. With this uh, church side that consumes us and is the best part. This is where you stop. Well, it's not broken, Andre. This, it was so good to practice these new tools. And also, we talked a lot about the kingdom investors. And they took on more of that burden, and we, were more, we became more intimate and touched on the miracles of the kingdom investors. It was really not good. And also, in, from the South, they also came along and uh, brought a lot of experiences. They traveled 30 hours to be with us and how the church life has consumed all of Brazil, not only our region, but how everyone has been paying that price. Since Andrea is also part of Sao Paulo, today we're giving you this uh, room. I had the privilege to participate on Sunday and to give ourselves for the word. It's so strong to love the church life we talked a lot about Ephesians 3 and the from how the base is love, which comes through the word, and to be involved with the kingdom investors 
go to Sao Paulo. It was an incredible time. It was really good. The opportunity to be closer. Even Rodrigo Pedro helped us to what is refined immersion. And we saw how far we were. But now we're learning that this word is becoming more alive in our in our lives. It's becoming more reality. We don't want recognition or have any ambition. We just want to serve until the Lord comes back. Really, the Lord is bringing us. I want that everyone to understand that none of that was programmed or prepared by me. The Spirit led ourselves in this way. And it is really wonderful, everything that He's doing among us. He really wants to take all of the uh, traces of these vices of the past, of religion, of fighting for a position, the struggle for the preeminence, loving the first place, of competition among us, who's first, second, who speaks better, and thank the Lord. Lord is removing this from us because the body of Christ, we don't have that in our human body. No member is fighting with each other. All members are organically united. One, one member supports the other. They all love the body. They all fight for the body. And I pray the Lord, God is little by little taking us out, all of us, removing the all our contamination we had. And now he's cleansing our heart and putting this wonderful and pure thing that is so pleasant. This is really good to live. And I made sure to read, including because in Salvador, someone came up to me and said that uh, when we hear your messages, we hear you sharing. When you speak about the church life, it seems to be an exclusive group, a group of all of those that are meeting with you. Actually, it is and it is not, because not everyone meeting with us they have their reality of this church life. But at the same time, this church life, it is open and available to anyone who wants to join. But it is very important for all of us to enter in this atmosphere of closely following the word every week, allowing this word to work in us. And then we will spontaneously bring forth this wonderful church life. The church life is not a denomination that those are not meeting with us. May this be clear to all of us that this is a reality of those who are living in the reality of the word. So let me go back and read this text. And on the other hand, I want to make it clear that I do not recommend but keep on seeking the text from the past. So much so that the text itself tells us that when God works at a certain moment, usually when God works in this moment through a group of people, this group of people, they seem to be an obscure group according to the wording in this text, an obscure group before the eyes of all Christendom. Or Christianity. Christianity did not recognize a lot. The Spirit begins to work at a certain group. So, and they don't give much credit. Credit, and sometimes they do not even understand it, and they even begin to persecute it. But after they then begin to discover their riches, and they try to reproduce their riches, but then it is no longer the word of the moment. You know, all the brothers who are following us, they must understand this. It's not that just to use the same word, let us say, in the next century, to say the same word is the prophetic word. No. When at the moment the Lord said it is the prophetic word, but use that only for sharing a, a beautiful message and giving a lecture or a sermon, it is no longer the word of the Spirit is speaking at that moment. 
then it doesn't work. It doesn't produce what would produce it. So that's why I say we must have wisdom, including to seek this text from the past. Therefore, I personally do not recommend to be going back to those texts. Whenever there's a need, what the Spirit wants, He will give us like now. So let me read it again in this text. Author, an American author, Jim Edwards, really sought in the way that he could to practice church life as in the Bible, but he did not believe that the structure of Christianity today and Catholicism and Protestantism could reproduce a church life that is so pure and genuine as God always desired. So then he went and in the uh, the meetings, in the home meetings, and meeting at home. But anyways, he was someone with a pure, a correct heart. The Lord gave him a vision. Praise the Lord. This is happening today among us. So let me read it again. So what is it says, renovation of an experience of Christ in depth will be the natural result of a desire for this, this that cannot be defined, sometimes called church life. So, for you to have the church life, you must have a desire, an earnest desire for you to want to live as the Bible shows the church life. What is a church life? I cannot define it, but it is a glorious church that is amazing and absorbing. That is, it is a church, a glorious church. When you really live this church, this moment in the church, you can realize how much glory is in it, how much glory also, it is impressive, amazing. Those who are participating and joining today, it is amazing. It is amazing. In our context, the Lord raised the teens and our young ones as captains of troops, the elders, the, the, the senior ones who cooperate. We have co porters every day on the streets, genuine experiences, supernatural experiences, and the church life. It is impressive, really causes us a great impression. Anyone who visits us today, it's not the, the conventional church life and the tra traditional religious one that, that makes people tired, even ourselves. But any visitor today gets impressed. Just so that you know, I don't know, must must be following us, but Caio from Bauru is in the U.S., one of our main co-workers in the U.S. I was told that this Tuesday, the conference in Bauru, his mother would go to the meeting. That the first con her first her first contact with the church. And I asked Caio, Caio, how was it? And he said. On Tuesday, it was uh, the happiest day in my life. I saw my mom, my brother, my sister-in-law. They were enjoying and jumping with joy very happily. So this church life is impressive. And on the other hand, for those who are living it uh, fully, it's absorbing. It is a, it's absorbing us in a sense of taking us, a swallowing up our time and energy, but of course, in a good way, in a positive way. We like to be soaked in, to be absorbed, consumed, not to say soaked up. We are being soaked, soaked up by this church life, taken in by this amazing church life. And it's, it's an jealous church life uh, in a sense that God with the church life to be exclusive to him. Church life that is dedicating with all their hearts to absorbing us. We don't want to see us dividing our, not even our time or energy or our heart 
with the world or anything else. And it is a living and free church. Praise the Lord. Church is living, filled with life. Also is free because it's letting the spirit to have freedom. In the past, we gave a halt and blocked the spirit. Today, there's freedom because we're learning with our teens, also our co-porters in the streets, to be simple and obedient to the word. The Lord said, we believe the word does the work. Not a place just of a people, but a people living in the heavenly places. Praise the Lord. The church life is formed by a people who do not live on this earth. Actually, they live in the heavenly places, as in Ephesians 2 shows us that in resurrection, brought us to heavenly places together with him, constantly absorbed by him and blind to anything else. Actually, we don't see anything else, right? There's nothing else important to us than the Lord and the church life itself. Church, as once it was, should be, must be, and will be. We're still groping, but praise the Lord, we're experiencing this. It is a bride fully in love by the Lord, his love. Praise the Lord, we're truly living a life of our romance with our Lord. Love the Lord, the church life is is causing us passion and make us really be passionate. It's like the love of a teen. We have that passion for the Lord, for the church life, even though um, for so many years in the church life, I'm going back to that the, the moments of the first love in the church. People who know him and they have experiences with him. This is what I mean. We are not superficial through the immersion of the word, Word in our hearts, Lord is giving us ex living experiences with Him, going out to the streets, co-porting, preaching the gospel, praying for people, having living experiences with Him. This is something wonderful. It's not a church life and facade and religion, but it is something with content and truth and reality. Now I'll leave it to you. Also, you're created to share with us. Amen. <laughs> Wow, so many riches, right? I look at it like this, Brother Pedro, before we were so worried to be a church that were right. It had to be like this, like that. But Brother Pedro has said, uh, showed us that in Revelation, there is uh, Ephesus, not Philadelphia because they were missing the principal thing, which is love. So we were trying to do everything right, everything in a correct way. But then we forgot. You can be squared and right, but you won't be able to absorb and be impressed because what makes us that is the word. So love is our base and our fundamental because if we were trying, no, it has to be this way, who speaks better? And so we were like, no, who's, who speaks well? Who's going to give a good message? This is not Philadelphia. The base of Philadelphia is love. And this is what absorbs and impresses us. In the matter of the teenagers, if we are able to see them. Who... Who says that teenagers can do something? And in 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 the world, teenagers are practically not worth anything. But the Lord has chosen the teenagers to do all this movement in the church. When Brother Pedro uh, started saying in, in Psalms, he's saying that that. These pieces of wood will, will catch on fire, and now we have about 500 uh, house of teens around the world, and this is from the Lord because they're they're 
because they love the word. The, uh, the brother said, this matter of love, teenagers are so, they love the word and so passionate for it. And this makes them, and also, I remember that these wooden sticks, uh, the, the locks allow us to catch on fire. And so we have now everyone catching on fire. The meetings in São Paulo, right, Douglas? Those, the older thing, every comes up and they catch fire. So we're, the church that where everyone is included, it started with our teenagers. So you see, the teenagers, they didn't want to participate in the meetings, but now they don't want to leave the prophetic word. Why? Because this is love. Uh, also, to finish my part, uh, this weekend in São Paulo, we're having vacation with the teen, and we have 40, 40, 40 teenagers this week. When will us in São Paulo 40? And by God's mercy, my two daughters are participating, but 40, 40 teenagers enjoying passing their their uh, vacation time before. They just wanted to sleep late, play video games, be on their phones. No, they're waking up early. They're waking up with God, immersing, sleeping with God. This is a sure so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop here because now I'm going to speak too much. But for me, we're devouring this in, 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 in a good sense. It's like devouring you and you want to continue. There's no more vacation, right? But Pedro and Baru, in Bauru, about a thousand people. We've never seen so many people in that region. And it's really consuming us. And truly, and to devour this devouring, all the groups, all the members are functioning. Uh, we were talking about investor, kingdom investors, such a great feast. When will be the next? When will be the next? Because everybody is functioning. And then everybody uh, collecting money and for others to participate. And also the time of meals, everybody also functioning. Nothing special, but all of them were, were functioning. All the members are functioning. And also with the presentation of the kingdom investor, everybody was so happy. And it's not. Brother Pedro has said that the teenagers will go to Disney or will go to the to the ranch or to the beach. But and, and also for the families. It's a high price. Here we have little time. We have a lot of time in traffic and, and work. But we need to invest in the kingdom. Some of these values we have a lot is time. And we've been investing it in the kingdom. It absorbs you, our time, our family. But it's for the kingdom. It's something that is glorious. So my Pedro is uh, one of the happiest moments that we're living. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> no, Andrea, you cannot Look, uh, wait. Look, Pedro. The, this is something that the brother probably that brother wrote, something that he just saw. But yesterday, my two little daughters are four years old. One is doing immersion that was repeating. A prophetic word. So the words are, are abiding in her. How can that not impress you? How can that word and uh, and also what is happening also in Korea? Everything is so impressive. So today, 
We live it out and experience. Maybe it was a dream for that brother, but for us, we came back. And it's something that makes us very glad. I know. So you imagine, we're speaking about this age range, which is the teenage, that in the past that was so difficult to deal with this age range in the world, I think that they still do not know what to do with, with people. With those young ones at that age, the Lord did a great work. May them fall as dewdrops in Psalm 110, verse 3. It is really a prophecy has been fulfilled. But now, let us look at the reflex on that. The first layer, let us say, that was saved by the Lord, the teenage. Look to the look at the preteens and the kids. All of them are mirroring in a generation ahead of them. For example, the teens they are mirroring. Let me say something for you. In the house of teens, we always recommend those who care for them to be the young co-porters, the young co-porters who are caring for those of the house of teens. So then they have as an example, a role model, reflex role model to them, which are those young ones who love the Lord, preach the gospel, the kingdom. So it is a model to them. So then they are looking forward to be emancipated. They want to get to this age, 18 years old, for them to take uh, direction. To, to, to go to college, can give six months to the Lord, or they can, after they finish all their high school, if they have a calling from the Lord, also to be a missionary, co porters to be used for, for missions in Korea, in Australia, the U.S. and Canada, Africa, Europe, the need today is so big. So they're looking at that. Imagine the preteens, those who are 8, 10, 11. They are not less cold. They are burning. They're burning. They actually want soon to join in the house of teens. It is an aspiration, holy aspiration. Really looking forward to that. We have no idea with that. And now see the kids. Kids were three, four, five. They are already looking up to the teens and preteens. They are already, it has been created a new culture among our kids or teens. You know, this is something that cannot be paid. There's no way to pay for that. You know, this benefit Lord is giving us because it is a moment. You know, everyone must agree. With me, it is a very difficult moment in the world to raise kids. It is a very difficult moment to those who have kids, preteens, who have teens. You raise them in this environment of the world, you lose them to the world. You don't know what else to do. But now, look what the Lord is doing among us. So on the one hand, we are very grateful to the Lord just to save the other generations. More than that, they are being prepared with this new culture, with their simplicity, love for the word. They will be forming really this church life that we're talking about. For them, it will be something that is their future. They continue in this simplicity, continue loving the word. They will have the least concern about fighting for the first place. They will have the least concern to fight with one another. They don't have that in their mindset. They only have to cooperate with one another, seek the Word together, to immerse themselves in the Word, to sleep with God, wake up with God, transcribe the Word, taking notes, and to let the Word to do supernatural things in them. And tomorrow when it gets to their age, they can go co-porting, go to the streets, they will be eager to that, even though today 
They still do not have a way to do that, but praise the Lord. We have the project Fish and Bread. They can distribute it, books for free. So I want to let that pass by us so quickly. Let me just go back quickly to um, a little more in this portion of this text. I really like this that I said a little about in Bauru. I think it's worth it in this live broadcast. Not everybody were in Bauru followed Bauru. So I'd like to read just one line that he said. Well, a small portion here. God simply created his great plan with Christ in the church. The center. Christ in the church is the center. He created it as the most natural of things. People may decide to fight against it, but cannot defeat it. So we saw that at least time of our church history, our history in the church, we saw already many attacks of the enemy. Church life was much fought against, but nobody was able to defeat it. All those who fought against it today are living in a pitiful situation. But the church continues healthy. The church continues more and more in this original form. It is pleasant to live. And then look at this. Look at the, the line that I wanted to read this phrase. The fact is, it is exactly in the blood circulation of the universe. <laughs> I believe that he did not read our messages. He did not read our messages, but there was a, the fact is the, the blood circulation of the universe, which is the circulation of the word. So when there can be the circulation of the, the, the word, when the church recognizes there is only one teaching of the apostles. Otherwise, there's no way to circulate it, right? One will be standing for one truth, the other will be standing for another truth. There's no circulation, but praise the Lord. There's one circulation when there is the prophetic word. Then I want to read it, what I said. Let me see here. All the Christians were in the environment of the church life. They will know the full depths of Christ. It seems the Lord made things for his fullness to be known only there. You know, at this point, I think it's very interesting for him to cover because it seems that when we read the Bible, read the Bible, there's always something hidden there that we cannot understand it as a whole. And when we begin, when we get to a moment of the Lord, oh, the church, and then it's no longer just individual. When it's individual, you're seeking, seeking, but it seems the Lord doesn't reveal it all. But when it is for the church, it begins to reveal everything and more. This is impressive. Then he's, he, he gave an example of the Old Testament, speaks of Christ. But the men of the Old Testament did not see Christ. And he says, God is like this keeps his highest revelation slightly concealed. For what? For men do not to tread upon it. He doesn't want to throw perils to the swine. But they want to give his revelation for those who value their revelation. He will only reveal it for those who value it. It's important to have this reverent love our teens have. And also, praise the Lord, we also have. Praise the Lord. Yet, a certain day, Christ came. Suddenly, God raised the, the veil. The man could go back to the Old Testament with very easily to see Christ in all of it. He began to see Christ in all of the Old Testament. But at the same time that God raised the veil, lift up the veil on the Old, he put a, a, a veil on the New Testament. While Christ is living on earth, men who heard it could not understand full significance of his words. Christ was concealed, veiled to all. He was persecuted, he was slandered, with the exception of, of his bunch of disciples, even his disciples, did not understand him fully to the Lord entered in them. And then for the days of Constantine, 225 
After Christ, much of God's original purpose was lost from Reformation and from Luther, God restoring these, but he continues with this principle of his current word in, on earth, even though he's lifting up the veil on the last things that he recovered, but he he, he hides the, the new activities. He does these things to avoid what is precious to be uh, uh, less appreciated. So what I want to say is one, one generation is passed. The Lord works in that generation and he speaks in that generation. The speaking is despised. Why? Because it brings new things, things that are not accepted in that, that generation. So they undercut it, despise it. But after that, they, they begin to, to, to accept it. They develop what is in the past generation was spoken of. When they begin to have light on the past generation, the Lord continues hiding from this generation the current thing. So what's happening among us? He doesn't want what is precious to be a cheap end. We're informed that 80% of all the evangelical teachings and fundamentals today came from the movement of the, the, the brothers in Plymouth in the 1800th. It seems it proves his work of fact, but the, ever the theologians in the beginning of them were convinced with that. It's at the time of the... the the Plymouth Brothers, nobody saw that. No one valued it just afterwards. So it was then in the mid-1800s that the predominant chains of Christianity, currents of the Christianity began to read the writings of the brethren, and they realized the riches that contained therein. All the generation behind. So from then on, the ministers began to prepare sermons based on what they read from the text of the brethren. The meetings on the Sunday morning service caused a lot of impression, but the structure could not cope with everything that they had said, what they had taught, had to be a little bit diluted. That is, you have no more environment, actually. Let me say that. He doesn't know, but let me say, it's no longer the Lord's fresh speaking. It is just a pitching that they learned to speak. Well, this is the problem. The problem it is that was easily resolved and simply left behind the main point. Now you know why God hid his work uh, for a whole generation among the brethren. But why at a certain point the Lord allowed the, the work to come to public? But at some point, he allowed the wonderful perceptions and experience of them to become common and diluted. It seems that when the message of the brethren became a good material for sermon or the Sunday morning services, the main contribution of them in church history began to, was finished. Because when they discover that it's a good material for preaching, the effect of that word is gone. There's no more effect. That is why I, do, I don't say that. Perhaps we don't know how to say that, but I'd, I, I, I'd say it's no longer, it may be the same word, but it's no longer the prophetic word. I don't know if you understand what I mean. It is not what the Lord is speaking at this moment with his mouth. We're only copying, this is like copy and paste, you know, at a wrong moment. So it, it makes no more effect. Why? Because God was, has got, he, he has gone. Why God was gone? Because no longer his living speaking. Letting the saints with one of the past works and left to do a work of re recovery and restoration in another place or healed, or hidden in front of just observation. What's happening among us, few people in Christianity are seeing. But the, Lord, the Lord is doing it. The Lord moves by the various Christian moments from then on. What's hidden in one generation is preached in sermons on Sunday in the, in the upcoming generation, always lagging behind. It's no longer the prophetic speaking. So the Lord moves, giving a new word. Uh, the, the perception of the, the first and adding this revelation, giving them new fields of discovery to experience and to recover it. 
the day, the beginning of the whole earth, mystery of all earth, are giving and revealed things only to obscure groups of the past generation. Past generation. Ministers today are also bringing messages and breathtaking on things that they do not know completely, on things that they never had experienced. That is, they, they speak of the past generations as if they did not experience it. They're repeating basically what they read in the books. People sitting on the benches are very impressed. The, the crucial point it is left behind. We'll finish it here. Do not mourn and, or cry over it. Everything is okay. Somewhere on earth today, our God is moving for a greater revelation for a new level of restoration. This is what I want to get to. Since I have to understand that it's not merely a message today. It is the speaking. The Lord is speaking with his mouth for us today. If you take copy and paste, and in a different moment, it's no longer the prophetic speaking of the Lord, the Lord's mouth. So it's not a matter of a, what I'm saying is not right. It's not what you're saying. It's the timing. The timing. The Lord is speaking today, serve the needs today. We have to believe today, if we believe in the upcoming generation or in the previous generation, you lose the effect of that word. So that is why those who do not believe the prophetic speaking as we do, we are now taking things from the past generation uh, to preach on a Sunday service to impress people, but there's no effect. It doesn't cause fruit. It, they, they, they are still in the same place. They do not advance. So I think it's very important for us to know. Amen. Are you going to speak, Douglas? Yes, it's very impressive how this word is practical for us. The, the structure is that the, the word was diluted and, you know, food that is reheated loses some nutrients. So we are experiencing the prophetic word and the miracles, whoever, whoever is in the streets, and they're not preaching, they're not preaching their own words without any shyness. They ask, what point can I pray for you? And they touch on the point of the immersion of that week. So whoever speaking, and I was so impressed by it. Uh, they were completely, completely full of the word as they were praying for view of the streets. So it was not their own words. It was not a knowledge or something that throughout the years. They did not do a, a course, like a study course to do missionary work. We don't do that. We hear the message and then we practice it. What we do for people in the streets is not a course, but it's something that we do. And this is something practical for anyone, for every member of the church that can do this. They can take, take immersion and go and pray for people. And this is making the blood circulate. And this movement that the Arthur spoke that will happen somewhere in the earth it's happening here in Brazil and Korea four or five young people in Korea doing miracles and reaching people not because they did a course uh, but to coach people or what word to speak no they have the word of today the prophetic word there's no structure and whoever is stays in the structure is staying is staying behind. They're getting old. Who's practicing sees these miracles? A thousand uh, brothers and sister there uh, uh, jumping. It's so impressive. 
There is no school for this. We are a group of people who practice the word. Amen. And I see it this way, that this word before that they use can, can, can touch the soul, but not the spirit. So it doesn't produce the building up of the church. So it says here uh, a word that's kind of soft and they use it to touch on the soul, but that will not produce fruits. What produces fruits is whatever touches the spirit. And what touches the spirit is some, the fresh fruit, the prophetic word. So Pedro, if, in fact, as I said in the past, oh, the person in the past, but to, we're living today. We're living it out today. And Brother Pedro said, to, um, to to value the revelation. How many times have we read Ephesians? Many times. But I have, I have never seen the river in Ephesians. Oh, what is this? When we went to Col Colossians, the Lord is revealing word after word. And this is you need to value. And Brother Pedro, the refined immersion the Lord brought in order to 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 touch more on this of our relationship, because if we only simply pass it by without inculcating it, oh. but I've seen how refined immersion uh, goes deeper. It's so much revelation. We can fall, as Rabbeinu said, of not valuing it. The Lord is sending revelation. Yes, I love it. Okay, Amen. Go to the next one. You know that the much food when there's uh, uh, so much food and then you don't value it. But this is fresh food, and the refined immersion is an instrument, an ideal instrument for us not to pass by the food just in any way, but for it to be really a real, uh, inculcated in us, to take light, direction, and admonishment, and and older saints need to learn how to do war cries. But all this, all this refined immersion is, is for us to value the word. Because when you go, you know, the building of a church life is built on love. It's not through doctrines. And then that's already on you, and it will never get out. And when it comes on you, you value it. I'm gonna. I'm so. I'm so desperate. But I'll let Andres speak a little bit. But let's value revelation, the revelation of the word. Oh, how much mercy do we have from God to live out this today? But God's mercy. He's giving us this wonderful church life. We're feeling Jesus abiding in us. How can we be so grateful? Well, our heart is lacking gratitude because it's a treasure that he's giving us. Yeah, we find immersion, the prophetic word, but I need to value it of what is happening. It's not something small. It's not coincidence. Is God who decided to reveal it to us. We're in this path, the Church of Philadelphia. To conclude, now we have to get to the message. I'll try to go over very quickly. We're speaking now. After what money it is a time of witnessly, and the his characteristics it is really to bring from the west to the the east to the west, vision of the church on the limits of the city, one church, one city. And then I said that this is a matter of the ground that we we're building, temple proper ground and on this ground we'll build it correctly so quickly I spoke about the 
Let's get to today's time to make it clear. The nation of Israel from the beginning of the century, the, the, the first century, they lost a nation nearly for 2,000 years. In 1948, it was restored the nation of Israel by the Lord's mercy. And today, we have the nation of Israel. When the nation was restored as a nation, in Tel Aviv, as a capital, they have called all the Jews who could to return to Israel to fight this new nation that was restored. So there was many more Jews spread out all over the world than Tel Aviv and Israel. And that there were Jews who were wealthier in New York. The Jews in New York, they were way richer than the Jews were in Israel. Jews in Buenos Aires, Sao Paulo, and all over the place here, wealthier and, and high, richer, and they had a higher number. Those who can represent the nation of Israel, those who make decisions, are those who are in Tel Aviv. So the ground, that's a reign of the, the proper, is the proper ground to build a nation. Today is no different. The proper ground to, to build the church life in each city it is those who really understood and returned to the ground of the vision, to the ground of the oneness, where they can include all the children of God. So in a, in a nutshell, when Watch Money saw that, that it, this is a great vision. Why? Because this gives us this representation of the church in the city. It gives us the right to receive the word, to receive the letter the Lord sends to the church, we would have the right to receive it. So much so that this word that we call it the prophetic word, it is the word the Lord destined to his church. But he did not have someone to hand it. He could not give it to a denomination or another denomination, but praise the Lord today. We, through the vision of Watchman Nee, Witness Lee, who brought it to the West, today we're practicing this ground of the church, the church oneness. Praise the Lord. With that, the prophetic word was restored in the time of Watch Muni, Witness Lee, Roger Tong, and today with us. So now, speaking of Brother Lee, we don't have time to go over to describe the whole bibliography book, but we have to also mention his great work of doing the life studies of all the New Testament and some of the Old Testament. They're very popular, like Exodus, Genesis, Exodus, so on and so forth. So it's a great contribution, so much so that all of that today is in the Bible in the recovery version with footnotes. All of the riches are there. Even today, I'm still using it for consultation. So it's the riches that was left to us. But it was always faithful to Brother Lee. And he, he moved when they said that, that we must take this vision, church vision to the West, came to Brazil. Well, he was always very faithful, picking up what was ministered by Brother Lee. Then he, as a faithful messenger, but he did not pass it on in a doctrinal way, but at least testified that himself, he passed it on his life in an organic way, practical way. That is why he gave much attention to all the tools to not say this coming weekend we'll talk about it. Then he brought it here. Then Brother Lee, praise the Lord, he developed his ministry in the U.S. When we got to 1984, he came to Brazil. He saw what the Spirit did to the Mr. Brother Dong. Really, he saw, he brought a thing that was the highest revelations was brought down here. And here, nobody thought it as strange was a great absorption and that he returned to the U.S., that they absorbed this word. 
And I even believe that this is really not their fault. It was not easy for those who are in the U.S. to believe that really in Brazil can have a consistent work of the Spirit because it's current to say those who have Latino blood, it is a blood that is fervent, but it's of short duration. But Brother Lee saw something, they did not give much credit. And I said, you know, the, the matter about the, the flash in the pan, they say that the flash in the pan, but Brother wrote to me as, as if it's the strip. The, and Brother Lee said, no, it actually was not. Said that uh, he said in the uh, last set of Genesis, he said, rumors about us also was spread in Central America and South America, but praise the Lord, his recovery in Brazil has been spread as wildfire. None of the firefighters know what to do about it. There's no way to put out this fire. Before this began to spread, the opposing ones of Christianity spread out rumors about me in the churches. I, I wait, for, wait for more time to see what will happen. This time passed and it's now, it all depends on being Joseph today. He's speaking about the Joseph. We are no one and nobody will be able to restrict the spread of the branches over the walls. Really, no one will be able to hold what the Lord is doing. Let me conclude here. Then, I believe Saint in 84, speaking this coming weekend, in 85, Brother Dong asked him, you not continue uh, ministering those trainings and conferences, and then I don't know how, how to continue to feed the churches in South America with the word. But at least had to Brother Dong. I have no more words. To dedicate my time, translate the recovery version, also to work in Taiwan. We're doing a little bit of work in Taiwan it requires some my time, and I will no longer give messages. Now you speak, you feed yourself, the churches in South America. That was the way it was. So I personally believe it was a moment of transition. A moment of uh, he, and then uh, that, I believe that was a moment for him that he was past the baton. And then when he, at the moment of his death, his co-worker said, would not say anything that Brother Lee did not say. They would keep in the scope of the ministry of Brother Lee. Well, this on the one hand, I believe that Brother Lee had this intention so that there may be no division as among them were those who are good scholars of the Bible, if they have much freedom, there could be a division among them. But until today, they keep a faithfulness to this oath they made, but, but the Spirit suffered, would suffer its deprivation of advancing. That is why I think that the Lord chose Brazil to give this continuation to us to go toward Philadelphia. Pray the Lord will still be speaking about it. The prophetic word became something so important to us that it is the missing piece to fit all things. That was it, that we needed to finish it. Just to say to everyone that we are in a moment that is really important in history, is a moment, brothers and sisters, who are following us now, is a moment that is, it's not a moment for us to be distracted now. It's not a moment for us to superficially follow 
say that I'm not following, this is not true, that I'm following, but if this is that I'm following, but not so much, you know, it does not be that way, because it's a crucial moment, and I believe that it's a moment that will be a decisive moment, who will be an overcomer, who won't be. Let, let us closely follow, let us not be distracted, let us not dilute this word, and I believe saints that will not regret it. Those who live holy and being absorbed by the church life today will not regret it. We will spend our time, we'll consume our money, we we'll consume all our energies. It will be worth it to reign with Christ for a thousand years in the church life. It will be so pleasant church life. Amazing and glorious. Now it's your turn to finish it. Amen. This fire, wildfire. It's something that we saw here in Brazil. And here today. In other parts as well. It's what is rescuing people who are afflicted outside. We're not a group that just stays with it for walls. That wildfire is going. We want to go better. We want to go deeper into this word. We want a group that has a reference for this prophetic word. That give, we give it importance. And may the Lord may establish his kingdom through us. Go delving in deeper with explosion, but also who has that, who values and practice it. It would be that group with, that has that wildfire. Here in Brazil, we have a people who have this word. And wildfire, fire, there's no way to, to control it. Or to put it out. That wildfire will invade every street, every city. Hallelujah. And this is an admonishment. And also in love to not... Even now, we can, I remember what the brother said uh, back saying the saying if you're running until now you can be 30 40 years of church life but if you get distracted you can stop and i'm encouraged to follow closely and the more you go close you follow closely the more you want to be closer i didn't want to leave the brothers I was trying to not leave because there's some more riches and you just want to be closer. He will, uh, Andre said, I, I need to do something. I'm going to have to find out something to be closer because the closer you are, the more you want to be close. And also falling closely, uh, falling closely also secures us. It's, it, it, it makes us safe from us being negative, have a positive agenda, and have the focus to be in the kingdom. So if my king is to enter into the kingdom, I need to be closer. You don't speak, you don't think about other distractions. So the closer you are, the more you want to be closer and less distracted you are. So it's just a consequence. Amen. Thank you, Brother Pedro, for all your words. We feel that we're in the way to Philadelphia. There's no pride. We just consider ourselves slaves. And God is giving us a present today in the church side. That has not ended, right, Douglas? We continue to be engaged and united as a church, as a body of Christ, to experience a new dimension. Praise the Lord. So let us ask Emerson to say a prayer for us. Amen. Amen. Okay? Amen. And also, I'll, I'll, I'll put on the comments so that the saints can say it. Amen.
Thank you, Lord, for this moment that we're living. We want to be consumed and absorbed by the church life, that, that life that has a base as love. We want to keep uh, going forward to the towards Philadelphia, that church so loved by the Lord. We are a small flock, but the Lord has chosen us to take this word to all the earth. We want to continue, Lord, being attracted by you. Continue to attract us, liberate us from all distractions, uh, also from all things that are negative. We want to be positive, following the prophetic word, following it closely. And Lord, lead us into the kingdom. We don't want to give up now. We want to advance. Oh, Lord Jesus. Amen. 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 Good, good evening, Amen. everyone. Good, good evening to everyone. So good to have it's you really all. Good. Thank you, Brother Pedro. Amen. Good evening. The Lord bless good you evening. all. Amen.